Do you ever wonder why natural selection chose sex? You know, uh, you know, this whole theme of this, everything I say has to do with natural selection. You know, this is selected for, this is selected against. N you know, the, 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 the natural environment will select the most efficient way to get something done. And, and sexual reproduction, at first glance, seems like it should be an evolutionary loser. Think about all the problems that go with sexual reproduction. And I'm not talking about your social lives here. I'm talking about biology. Think about this. First thing, you got a chromosome problem, okay? And that's what we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about. But f forget about that. Then you gotta make a special group of cells. Then you gotta get one cell to the other, all right? And in order to get that cell to the other, you have to evolve all these behaviors constantly in competition with each other. And you know, what dance do I need to do? What, what, and then you gotta care for your young. Asexual reproduction seems to be a lot simpler. Think about it, asexual reproduction, reproduction without sex. All right, binary fission in bacteria. How simple is that? One, two. No mating rituals, no, you don't have to go out and buy clothes and, and impress people and take them out to dinner. It's very simple. And even some more advanced organisms do asexual reproduction. You know, corals. You ever been on a coral reef? Now, corals reproduce both sexually and asexually, but the bottom line is corals and creatures of their ilk, if this is a coral polyp, okay, reproduce asexually by a, a thing called budding. And what they, in essence, do is they make an asexual offspring that grows off of their, their, their side, like so, and eventually forms a brand new organism, and that's the way a reef forms. And they'll build this calcium carbonate skeleton around their outside, and you have a coral reef. Plants, plants, okay, yes, plants do sexual reproduction, but many of them can do asexual reproduction. You've heard of spores. You've heard of, um, many of you have taken cuttings, where you cut a piece of plant, you throw it in the ground, and you get a new plant. How simple is that? So, so why then has sexual selection or sexual reproduction been selected for? And the answer to that is, remember one thing. Variety is the spice of evolution. You see, the point here is this. Darwin's theory of natural selection stated some very elegantly simple contexts, and that was one. There's a whole lot of offspring born, and two, there are varieties in these offspring, and the varieties compete. And competition isn't necessarily, that's my hamburger, get out of the way. Competition can be fleeing from a predator. Speed. Competition can be having a variation that allows you to hide from a predator. Competition can mean a lot of different things. So the key here is sex has been selected for, at least we can say this generically, sex has been selected for because variety is selected for. And sexual reproduction produces new combinations of genes, therefore variety. In other words, it comes down to this. It comes to, down to the fact that a female, symbol for female, crossed with a male, symbol for male, will share genes and you get a mixing of the genes. You get what are called recombinants or recombinations. And in these recombinants or these recombinations, you're going to get new variety. And in getting new variety, you're going to have different levels of fitness. Not fitness as in physical fitness, but fitness as in natural selection. And some will be more fit in this environment, but guess what? If the environment changes, other ones may be more fit, and if it doesn't change, well, they had their time on the planet. So the bottom line is, it seems that, that sexual reproduction is probably here to stay.